welcome to microbiological concepts so in this video we are going to see about the well known enterobacteriaceae member shigella species here in this video we can see the morphology cultural characteristics resistance pathogenesis laboratory diagnosis and treatment of this species so when we talk about the enterobacteriaceae family it is a large family which comprises 30 genera and more than 100 species were identified so far. The well known Escherichia coli, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Citrobacter, Proteus, and Seracia species comes under this family. Let's go into the video. Shigella species is the causative agent of bacillary dysentery, and the name Shigella species comes from the word Shiga. So, there is a history behind the identification of this Shigella species. In 1896, there was an outbreak of dysentery occurs in Japan. So, a physician named Hikiyoshi Shiga who was investigating the cause for this outbreak at the time and he isolated a bacteria from a stool sample of a patient and he named that bacteria as baseless dysentery A because it causes dysentery right. So, he named it as baseless dysentery A and later this bacteria is renamed as Shigella dysentery type 1. When we see the morphology of Shigella species, these are all short gram-negative rods and, and the size is about 0.5 into 1 to 3 micrometer and these are all non-motile, non-sporing and non-capsulated rods. These are aerobic bacteria and facultative anaerobic bacteria. What is anaerobic? Anaerobe means it can live without the presence of oxygen. Aerobe means it can survive in the presence of oxygen. So, facultative anaerobe is uh, the bacteria which can survive in both oxygen and in the absence of oxygen. When we see the growth temperature, it can grow uh, in the range between 10 to 40 degrees Celsius, but the optimal growth temperature is 37 degrees Celsius and the pH is 7.4. When we culture this bacteria in a culture media, after overnight incubation, it produces a small colonies of 2 millimeter diameter size and the colonies uh, are circular and um, when we see the elevation, it forms convex colonies and these are all smooth colonies and translucent in nature. Translucent means the colonies which permit the passage of light. And for the identification of Shigella species, mainly we can use Mekangi agar, Salmonella Shigella agar or SS agar, Deoxycholate agar or DCA agar, Silos Lysine Deoxycholate or XLD agar. Uh, when this colony is grown in the Mekongi agar means it produces colorless colonies. It is a selective and differential media and this media is designed to selectively isolate the gram negative and enteric bacteria. Enteric bacteria means those organisms which is mainly present in the intestinal tract, right? We can differentiate the bacteria with the help of lactose fermentation. So, here the Sigella species cannot have the ability to ferment lactose. So, the colonies appears colorless in this media. But there is one exception that is Sigella zoni which ferments lactose late. So, it produces pale pink colonies. Here you can see the growth of Sigella colonies in the Mekangi agar. It produces colorless colonies. When we talk about the deoxycholate citrate agar and silos lysine deoxycholate agar, these two medias are commonly used for the identification of Salmonella and Shigella species. Here, the Salmonella species produce red colored colonies with black center due to the production of hydrogen sulfate, but the Shigella species produce red colored colonies, but um, it cannot produce the black center because it don't have the ability to produce hydrogen sulfide. So, we can easily distinguish the Salmonella and Shigella species in, by using these two agars. When we talk about the resistant patterns of Shigella, 
these species are killed at 56 degrees celsius in one hour and one person phenol in 30 minutes but in ice it can survive for one to six months it can remain viable in moist environments for days but it can die rapidly on drying in feces this um, bacteria die within few hours because of the acidity produced by the growth of coliform in general shigella sony is more resistant than other shigella species when we see about the biochemical reactions shigella is methyl red positive it can reduce nitrates to nitrate in citrate utilization test it cannot utilize citrate as the sole source of carbon so the, we cannot observe the color change from green to blue uh, as i already told it don't have the ability to produce the hydrogen sulfide and these are inhibited by potassium cyanide it produces catalase but there is one exception shigella dysentriate type 1 cannot produce catalase enzyme it can ferment glucose with the production of acid but it cannot produce gas during the fermentation there is also two exceptions shigella flexneri and shigella boidi ferment glucose with the production of acid and gas shigella species can ferment mannitol so we can classify the shigella species based on the mannitol fermentation the mannitol fermenting Shigella species include Shigella flexneri, Shigella boidi and Shigella sony. But Shigella dysentriae does not ferment mannitol. Shigella do not ferment lactose and sucrose. But Shigella sony which ferment sucrose and lactose in the later period. It also does not ferment adonitol, inositol and salicin. Let's move on to the pathogenesis of bacillary dysentery. It is a multi-step process. The first step is the ingestion. That is, um, if a person ingests uh, 10 to 100 bacilli of shigella through contaminated food, water or through direct contact with an infected patient, the infection started. So after injection, through the food, it enters into the stomach of that person and it can survive the acidic environment of the stomach and uh, finally it reaches the small intestine so once it reaches the small intestine it primarily targets the epithelial cells which is present in the colon for internalization it uses a type 3 secretion system and type 3 secretion system is a major virulence factor which is found in certain gram negative bacteria that allows them to directly inject their own proteins that is effector proteins into the cytoplasm of the host cells it's like a syringe so it can easily inject the effector proteins into the host cells so after injecting the effector proteins it promote the bacterial uptake and internalization process by this manner it enters inside the cells so once it uh, get inside the cells the shigella escapes the phagosome and replicates in the cytoplasm what is phagosome it is a subcellular organelle which destroys the pathogens through phagocytosis process right so the shigella escapes the phagosome so it can replicate easily in the cytoplasm and then it moves between cells it uh, because it uh, replicates in one cell and then it started to move to another cell so how it can move so it manipulate the actin cytoskeleton and uh, it propel itself through the cell membranes uh, in this manner it um, easily uh, spread within the intestinal tissue so once it started to spread it triggers a strong inflammatory response by releasing the cytokines which leads to the tissue damage it results in the ulceration and necrosis of the intestinal li lining what is ulceration ulceration is the formation of a break in the intestinal lining okay and what is necrosis necrosis means death of cells once it triggers the inflammatory response it releases cytokine 
so it causes the ulceration and necrosis in the intestinal lining that is the main cause for bloody diarrhea okay then what are the clinical manifestations main symptoms are bloody diarrhea fever abdominal cramps and tenesmus tenesmus means a feeling of incomplete bowel evacuation then we move on to the laboratory diagnosis of shigella species patient who is suspected to having a bacillary dysentery we can collect the stool samples and rectal swabs of that patient if we uh, do analysis without delay means we can proceed or otherwise if any delay happens means we can inoculate the feces into the transport medium that is sacs buffered glycerol saline or gram negative drop the ph should be in between 7 to 7.4 then we can perform the microscopy after gram staining it is uh, showing the gram negative rods and this do not form spores when we do direct smear means Uh, in severe cases the stool uh, may contain the pustules and red blood cells um, because of the severe inflammation there are different selective media and culture medias are used for the isolation as i already told mekanki agar salmonella shigella agar then xld agar deoxycholate agar mainly used for the isolation when we perform the biochemical test it is oxidase negative do not ferment lactose or sucrose but it can ferment glucose most of the shigella species are indole positive and then we move on to the serological diagnosis so we can classify the shigella species based on the o antigens into shigella dysentery shigella flexneri shigella body and shigella soni antimicrobial susceptibility testing is very important because the shigella species can show resistance to most of the common antibiotics we are using now we must do the antibiotic susceptibility testing before giving proper treatment so then last topic is treatment so i already told the patients is having the severe diarrhea with blood cells and pustules right in acute cases particularly for infants young children due to diarrhea dehydration occurs right Uh, so in order to prevent the dehydration we can give the oral rehydration therapy that is oras powder should be given or uh, sometimes we are uh, giving the iv uh, to rehydrate the magen i think you clearly understand this topic if you find any difficulties in this topic means you can please comment it in the comment section and if you like this video you can share to your friends also okay thank you see you in the next video if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe share like and click the bell button if you have any more doubts you can write your doubts in the comment section below thank you